Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what we've all been hearing and talking about for the last at least four or five years, and that is rack systems in the reptile hobby. So today, basically, I'm just going to kind of spill the tea on rack systems about why they have been used, why we need to, as a hobby, continue to try to think about a lot of different other alternatives, as well as rack systems still need in the hobby. So we're just gonna get right into it. So rack systems, obviously, we're talking about these guys here in the background of most of the videos over the last year or so, as you see the racks behind me. And that is simply for the fact that why we have to use them and why we will continue to use them is because it makes it easy for us. That is the number one reason why we use them. It makes it so we can keep the animals healthy and their habitat maintained and their requirements as far as humidity and temperature goes. It makes it very easy for us as keepers, breeders, hobbyists to maintain those parameters. But that doesn't necessarily mean it is the best for the animal specifically. Generally, when we're talking about rack systems, of course, we're talking about snakes, although there are a few people who do, in fact, use rack systems for different types of reptiles. Now, at this point, the main thing that we've essentially moved away from from rack systems is the minimalistic keeping. And as I would like to say we have moved away, I'm saying as more of like a small-time hobbyist or batch breeder or keeper versus a large corporation like you know, Reptiles by Mac or somebody who does literally thousands of animals a year as far as production goes. We've moved away from that more minimalist thinking where it's literally just a paper towel and just a cup and that's it in the rack systems. We moved slightly away from that and now we're talking about, in my opinion, a better conversation about lighting and about ultraviolet light and about the ability to actually use more of their natural behaviors as we're learning more about that and starting to accept that a little bit as well. So with that in mind, I have started to, as because I am in fact a breeder and breeders are still going to use these guys. And I'm talking, I'm gonna can talk about, ugh, sorry, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. But the main thing is what we're doing now is as smaller keepers, batch breeders, small, larger, larger scale hobbyists, we're starting to take baby steps towards those better things. And so we're stopping, we're starting to talk more and use more large enclosures, larger tubs, clear tubs that allow the light, uh, that allow the photo period and a bunch of other things to start to baby step that towards better keeping and practices as far as husbandry goes. Now, that being said, I have mentioned it now a couple times at this point about why they're still a necessity in the hobby. And the big thing about it, what it all comes down to honestly is money. This industry is a multi-million dollar industry and it is growing every year. And in fact, during COVID, the popularity of reptile pets in this country exploded. It is close to one in 10 homes has a pet reptile in there. And when you think about rack systems, most of those snakes are ball pythons and then probably the number two being corn snakes. But ball pythons by far are the number one culprit of being in rack systems as well as the most popular pet. Now, obviously the popularity of outside of breeders and things came from popular personalities on YouTube. And no, I'm not throwing blame on them or shade or whatever on these guys right now. That is how so many of us got into this hobby is those early pioneers of YouTube and keeping reptiles that got us all really interest into it. That is 100% the reason why I am invested into it as much as I am. I always liked them as a little kid, I would play with them, but that doesn't mean I was always thinking about keeping as many as I do today and rack systems are the reason for that. But with that being said, as we've all kind of agreed that minimalistic keeping racks aren't necessarily the best for the animals, mental stimulation and things like that, we also have to think about the cost of keeping those things and the cost of getting people into the hobby. As a large scale breeder, and I'm slightly removed from this little statement, as a large scale breeder, the ability to keep the cost of the animals down for someone coming in and buying their first pet reptile or buying other animals is either for part of their keeping ability or they want to invest into animals and they want to be part of the reptile breeding hobby as well. To do that, it's all about money and overhead. And so the ability to have as many animals as they can humanely rack systems are the number one way to do so. That is how we keep the cost of animals down versus as, as much as they could be. I would love it to where every single person who kept corn snakes and ball pythons 
all had their animals in three foot, four foot, six foot enclosures, and they all were kept with plenty of space to climb, lots of ambient temperatures, huge full, full light, ultraviolet, UVA and UVB spectrum lighting. But unfortunately to do that, that would take the cost of say a piebald ball python around $300, and that would make it over a thousand dollar animal because the cost and the size and the space requirements to keep the animals and reproduce them humanely in that fashion arguably and honestly the better fashion would make it so that the animals cost significantly more money which then becomes a huge barrier for wanting people to get into this hobby so we still need breeders and yes that includes more than just myself we still need these large-scale breeders that produce as many animals as they can to sustain the need and the want for this hobby that being said as i've mentioned before we also need to start thinking about better steps and how to actually keep them humanely as well. That's the big thing. We're talking about animal welfare here. We want to be able to give them the best amount of treatment, the best enclosures, everything we can for all of these animals specifically. And so that's where it kind of falls back in place to now these larger scale keepers, small batch breeders like myself that are starting to take those little bit of extra steps. And so today, in addition to this lovely little rant that I'm giving everyone, I'm gonna show you a way that now smaller brash breeders are starting to do their rack systems So this out. right here, this is a 41 quart Sterilite enclosure. This is one of the standard sizes that a lot of people in the hobby use, myself included. Now this size is generally reserved for adult colubrids and honestly, sometimes adult ball pythons. There is another one called a VE700, uh, I think is what it is, that's a little bit wider. But overall, this is kind of a standard size that a lot of people keep their adult ball pythons in. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. The 41 quarts are only for my grow out colubrids and grow out ball pythons. So today, we moved our little king snake into this enclosure, and I'm gonna show this off a little bit. So, keeping in mind, this isn't a rack system. I have this, it's really nice and clear that allows a photo period. So unfortunately I don't have ultraviolet light on here, but it does allow a 12 hour on off light cycle, cycle that does in fact help with the animals. Now, this is in a rack system, so this is gonna be open. This is where some light will be exposed. And this is gonna be the back where the heat source is over on this side. So when we look at this, we take what I've talked a lot about a bunch of the, about all of the different enclosure builds and we're applying a lot of the same thing. So we start with the heat system. It's heat tape in the back, monitored by the uh, <laughs> monitored by the thermostat. Sorry, it's been a long day already. So that way we can maintain the heat. These holes allow for ventilation and aren't large enough for the little king snake to get out of. Moving from there, we talk about the substrate. Personally, I like more of the natural substrates, but as we add more to that, they can actually create a lot more humidity inside of this rack system, which is you know why we use the rack systems, because it's a lot easier to maintain that and control it. So I'm using aspen bedding, not only to help control that, but also as an example of how a lot of people are doing it. Moving on from there, we wanna talk about water and hides. Now here's the water, obviously got some aspen here because I pulled it out of the rack and, I'm, and I was searching for the king snake just to make sure he's here. And I think he's still under this hide, but we'll show him in a second. Then we talk about the hides. So we have the hides here. Yeah, he's already buried in the aspen. We have two different hides. One in the back where the warm side is, one in the front where the cool side is. That way, even though it's this large open thing, he can still feel secure under these individual hides. There's still quite a bit of a gap in between here and the top, so it allows him to perch on top. And then we have a bunch of different things in here for him to interact with. We have a live, well, live, but we have a real piece of wood right here that can be washed and scraped away if he ever poops on it or anything like that and allow him to interact with, touch, smell, rub against as far as the shed goes. Actual rocks right here. And then as always, my uh, very lovely giant tub of artificial plants that can be taken out if they can be washed, if they cannot be, they are easily disposed of because they're fairly inexpensive and it allows me to move them around and change them up. As I go around spot cleaning them, I can move the hides around, I can move them around, I can swap them out, I can change these in and out of a bunch of other different types of colors and textures and things like that. So I think he's over here. Let's see, where is he? Is he over here? He's over here. So sorry, we're gonna dig him out right here. I don't know, where is he going? He's under here somewhere. There he is. All right, so this is 
our flame mosaic king snake. So obviously he's not too happy with his little tail wagon like right there. But this is the size of the snake that's gonna be in this rack. Now keep in mind, this is the size rack that a lot of people keep their adult colubrids or their adult or sub-adult ball pythons in. So that's why this is actually his grow out one. And eventually he'll be moving either to a larger full enclosure or he'll be moving to a much larger rack. And I will actually show you the size tub that I put my adult colubrids, most of the adult colubrids and the adult ball pythons in. So we're gonna put him back. And then I'll show you that. So this is the size container that I use for my adult ball pythons and sub-adult boas in these rack systems. And obviously you can see that I have a Christmas tree tub here, which is even larger, taller and longer and wider than this guy right here. So this is 74 quarts. So this is close to double the size volume that a lot of people keep their small, their, keep their larger snakes in. So this is one example of how, while yes, I very easily could fit close to twice as many snakes in this large building, just in the rack systems as I do, but to not be a complete hypocrite, this is something that I think that I feel I can do as a person who cares a lot about the actual husbandry, maintaining and education and love of these animals, that I can do these small steps to still maintain to be a breeder and still keep a large number of animals under my care within reason that doesn't get away from me and still be a little bit better for them than keeping them in much smaller enclosures. Now, with that being said, all that means that potentially I could be in fact charging a little bit more for my animals than some people do. And in fact, in some cases, I charge a lot more for the animals I do. In fact, all of the boas that I ever produce because of all the testing that goes into them, because of all the extra care that goes into them, how long it goes for the gestation period and the incubation times and all of that. And yes, there are live bears, they incubate in the mommy. Um, I end up charging a lot more for even just a hypo boa imperator than a lot of people do. And every time, I always do well. They always go to a good, well-educated, well-researched home, which means that that's actually a good thing. That means that if I can do it, other people who are taking the extra time, the extra space, the extra money to do so can also do that. And so that way we can start to have a little bit more respect for the animals as well. Now, that being said, I'm also going to show you one more little enclosure that I do for my holdbacks. So this is a ball python that I held back from last year. This is my holdback soon to be grow out tub. And in fact, eventually she'll be moving into a larger tub as well. So this is our little holdback tub. In fact, this is actually smaller than the usual holdback tubs I have. I'm just out of space in the current rack that I have as I work on making more large racks, as well as I acquired a couple other used ones from somebody at a good rate. And this tub allows to sit on that shelf securely. So that's why I'm using this tub for this animal. But this ball python is our holdback from last year. This is Connie. She is a female banana genetic stripe ball python. And this is her small little enclosure right here. Eventually, I will in fact be moving her to a 32 quart tub, which is what a lot of people keep their grow out two to three year old ball pythons before moving on to the 41 quarts. So this is actually very small than what I would normally do. In fact, I should probably have a smaller water bowl than this, but I like these larger water bowls with enough in case I miss something, forget a day to where I'm not missing them or I just kind of overlook it. They can still soak in here because theoretically a ball python under the correct husbandry conditions usually will not soak. But with that being said, all of the same things that we kind of talked about in all of the other enclosure videos that we talked about with the flame king snake, this thicker substrate, obviously because it's a ball python, because we're in Colorado, it's a high desert. We have this coconut, extra humidity, holds that very well, doesn't mold too, too much, two different hides. This is actually the back of where it sits. So this is the back, so here's the warm, here's the cool different little things for her to interact with and she's gonna go right back in here. So I just kind of wanted to wrap up and finish and say that, so if you are someone who wants to get into breeding, is really concerned about how animals are being kept and you wanna buy from someone who is keeping better practices, or even if you're someone like me, who when you very first saw all these guys on YouTube and they had very minimalistic and a lot smaller enclosures and so you went and got all of those animals, now you have too many for what you have, you know, just like I did, I'm admitting I 100% fell into that. I am constantly working on 
building, buying, and upgrading enclosures based on size. The more we learn um, from everybody who keeps those animals and things like that, that this is a good positive step you can take. And someone who's looking to buy, as I mentioned, look for someone who has honestly a social media presence, a YouTube, an Instagram, a Facebook, whatever, TikTok, that does in fact show that they are kind of going a little bit above and beyond what was the reptile dogma for the last 10 years or so and maybe seek them out over necessarily getting one that's a little bit cheaper, but one who is going to go the extra mile for not only the animal, but for you as well. That being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this. It's been a little while since I had a little bit more of a ranty video for everyone, but this is something that I see kind of a lot and it's been talked a lot it's been refreshed again, I should say, because of everything with Dave Kaufman's new video uh, where he goes to Africa and he goes and finds wild ball pythons in the wild. And if you haven't watched that, I absolutely highly recommend that you go and check that out. That being said, there is a little bit of back and forth about how when you go out and you make a documentary or anything, you can't do it without a little bit of your own bias and kind of point to make. Dave Coffin does an excellent job of showing how he finds these things in the wild. He talks to the people who would go out and actually find the ball pythons that were imported in. He talks to them. He talks to them where they would find them, how they would find them, where and when they would find them. And that comes across. However, it does leave out some other things that have been mentioned about in other papers and things as well. So if this is something that is something that is you're really passionate about, really curious about, I highly recommend you go check that out and then go try to follow some of the other videos and other conversations that are being had about different conflicts and conversations about how different species, not just ball pythons, that's just the obvious easy one, how they're being actually kept in the hobby, what their actual environments are like in the wild and get your information from a lot of different sources. That's why I don't make care guide videos because how I do it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for everyone. That's why I always say not only in this video, but all of the other ones, this is one way and a possible way that you can do it. So with that being said, sorry I kind of rambled there at the end. I just really wanted to make sure to kind of get that all out there and stuff for it's something to start a conversation, something to think about as well. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, be happy to answer them down at the, below in the comments of this video. Just please keep it civil, of course. The rack and the enclosure videos always gets me yelled at. Doesn't matter what I do or how I do it. So just keep it civil. I'll be happy to answer. And as I said before, I'm doing the best of my ability, what I can do, and I am improving every ways that I can. And I'm sure plenty of other people are as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll check you next time.